Hi, POE students. This is Mr. White. And yes, we are asynchronous because of the I-STEP. So if you're a junior, you're probably in the building taking I-STEP and not even watching this video. If you're anything other than that, then you could be watching this video. Um, I'm going to go over what's expected this week, the entire week, so that uh, it's not a different video every day. You can refer back to this video on what's expected. Um, nothing is going to be turned in and not gone over this week. So you can be rest assured that we'll go over the things that uh, need that are need to be submitted this week so that you can be confident on what you're turning in, that you're turning in the right thing, um, that we can even go over any questions you have on the material. So let's take a look. Looking at this uh, homepage, we see that it's February month down there. This is Canvas, by the way. Um, I, we are going to go over a free body diagram. That's something we're going to do this week, the free body diagram. We kind of touched on it last week, but uh, not enough to actually submit anything. Um, but there is an assignment, a Google assignment attached to the free body diagram 213. Uh, there's the West Point bridge design. If you haven't had a chance to play around with that, maybe you can figure out how to download that and play around with that. It's kind of fun. And then there's calculating force vectors. I put calculating vectors down there, but it's calculating force vectors, two, one, four. You will see those also in this week's agenda. I put it to not be confusing. I put free body diagram for Tuesday and I put uh, calculating force vectors for Thursday. But you could do them all today if you wanted to, to do that or save them all for the last minute, which you probably don't want to do that. Um, anyway, they're due on Monday. So we will have Monday. We'll spend time going over these things and ideally submit them Monday. Now, if you don't feel comfortable submitting Monday, you're like, hey, listen, I don't I, I don't get it completely. It's not a big deal. OK, I just the main thing is for you to understand the material, not turn them in by a specific date and only understand 10 percent of it. So let's take a look first at force vectors. Now, I'm not going to or free body diagrams, rather. I'm not going to go over the material like like a lesson, so I'm going to expect you guys to be doing that portion your own. And then, but I am going to try to kind of guide you through it a little bit during this video. So first, let's click on free body diagram. Now, remember free body diagram. This is very similar to what you're going to see on the free body diagram 213 in my PLTW. The only difference is when you click on these resources, it's going to bring you to the my PLTW stuff. So know that that will happen. All right, when I click right here on the free body diagram, either one of these things, it takes me to the my PLTW, as you can see. And it's just kind of like a lesson kind of covering what free body diagrams are. There's something about moment right there. Um, some of the things that are on there, <clears throat> what the forces will look like. So forces are arrows. There's a normal force. There's the weight. And then there's also a truss system here that there's a free body diagram with as well. We haven't covered this part. This is the new part. So free body diagram support reactions. So you can look at this and try to understand that the most common one we use is a pin on one side and a roller on the other. Um, so probably pin at A and a roller at B most likely. But there's cables, there's other surfaces, there's a cantilever, I call this cantilever or fixed, I, I normally say cantilever, uh, from to one section. That's a moment, that's where a moment would be acting because there's nothing on this side supporting it, but there's a weight. And so you're gonna have a rotation force. There's reaction, uh, friction reaction, and incline surface there as well. Those are just that's just terminology. And then it goes over like, okay, we'll click quickly to this one. This is a free body diagram for a bridge, a truss bridge. So it does say you working with a partner uh, represent the point of application and direction of the support reactions with ve with vectors on the free body diagram. So it's talking about a like member A to E, E to B, B to D, C to C, D to C, all this stuff, B to C, A, A to B, those kind of things. So we take a look and we say, okay, uh, the pin connection at A, you see it's a pin connection, represents, is represented with a vertical and horizontal reactionary force. So 
which have vertical and horizontal reactionary force. And the roller connection is C is represented only with a vertical force. Now, that's weird is because they don't show the horizontal force on A, which they should. There should be an arrow going this direction horizontally on A because it is a pin. The B, the C, the, the uh, point at C is a roller, so there won't be any horizontal force. It's meant to slide, so it's not trying to react to that force. Oh, here we go. Sorry, I was thinking of this as the free body diagram. This is just the visual representation. Here's the free body diagram. That's what it's saying in this moment here. It's saying, hey, there's a force at reactionary A on the x-axis, just like the force at A, a reaction at A on the y-axis. There's a re reaction at C on the y-axis, and there's a reactionary force rate, or not a reactionary force, but a force, a load of 500 force pounds. This isn't feet or anything like this. This is just 500 pounds of force. So this would be the free body diagram for the above image right here. Okay. Nothing crazy. Just you're showing that this 500 pound load is met with reactionary forces at A and C. Now, you can see that that those were the only things opposing the force. That's why if this were just, this didn't have the roller or the pin, it, it would be impossible to tell where the actual reactionary force is, but these little images represent that there's the, those are the attachment points for the stuff. And then it clicks, then you should try to answer these questions as best as possible to see if you understand the information. I'm not gonna click on them, but you can kind of see what they would look like um, and then complete it. Now, the assignment is for this assign. The assignment for this one is to do a free body diagram yourself. So, here's the assignment. This is the ex exact same thing that you'll see on the Google document here. So it says in this activity, you will practice creating free body diagrams to evaluate all the force interacting with all the forces interacting with those objects. I'm talking about the fishbowl and the stand here. Um, examine the image right here. Um, there's also some logs in this log holder here. And then there's a street light with cables, okay? And the reactionary force of those. So try your best to create a free body diagram using drawings. Um, you could use the drawing feature within the Google Doc if that's better for you, or you can sketch them and take a picture and submit the picture as well. Like upload the picture to the Google Doc if that makes sense. So for example, right here is the Google Doc that you would submit to 1.3. I have the pictures and you could do a drawing below. So you could say, okay, here's the fish bowl. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and below that and insert you know, a drawing. And I'll do a new one. And you can say, hey, you know, I have a fish bowl here. And there's a arrow. The weight of the fishbowl. Actually, I would probably go like that. The one that that's up there has like a reactionary force on that side. I would probably flip them and do reactionary this way. So let me go that way. I'll delete that. As well. So you could do one with a fishbowl. Um, and the stand there as well. If you want to do them separately, that's all right. But uh, you can also do them together. An example of that would be like this. Uh, why am I having trouble drawing a shape? Here we go. There. There we go. So like this, and then you can say, okay, now if I draw the arrows, the fish bowl. You can say, hey, of this one here, maybe I have a, I don't know if I have a force that way. I have a normal force meeting the column. Or maybe you can say, hey, if the fishbowl itself were something, then I would have a normal force uh, through the column meeting the fishbowl. So there's not a wrong way. It just depends on what you're specifically looking at. Are you looking at these two things together or them individually? So you can save and close, and then you can copy that, I think, down there and paste it or whatever. Oops, no, that's not right. And you can insert. Anyway, 
You could use the drawing like that, or you can do a sketches. So it says, examine the image below, draw a free body diagram for both objects. There's fish ball and stand. Use the notion in the image as subscript as subscribe subscripts when labeling the force. Oh, there it is. Okay. So looking at the text a little bit more, I probably would do them individually like a bowl and then the and then the column. And then the other two. So we'll check our answers on Monday. This is something to complete by Monday. And let's look at the next thing. The next thing is the calculating vectors, calculating force vectors. When I click on this, it's another assignment just like this. This is another one that is fine via the um, canvas. The only thing is the force vectors here is an actual PowerPoint that you go over. This is something that you will need to go over. It's not something you can look at and say, ah, great. This is another one of those things where these 17 questions, 15 plus two uh, conclusion questions are on the activity. That's what you're seeing for your Google Doc. So you have to know the magnitude of A, what's the direction of A, what's the sense of A, and then you would say, okay, sketch vectors A with X and Y components. Let's just quickly, briefly look at the PowerPoint. So again, it's going to be a PowerPoint. It's going to be a download. You're going to click on the PowerPoint to open it up, and you're going to see force vectors here. Now, it gives you what the examples of position force moment. It tells you about sense magnitude. So the magnitude here, they give you the magnitude already. Um, they're saying magnitude equals three. Okay, they give you what sense is upward and right in this situation. That's what sense would be. Um, direction, you could say 30 degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. That's one way to use it. 30 degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. If this were the horizon, that's our x-axis. 30 degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. That would be direction. That's how you would label. Um, here's the sense up left, up right. You can see that there's positive negatives for the y and x-axis based on the four quadrants that you guys should probably are probably used to. Again, I'm going over this quickly because I'm expecting you to do it, and I don't want this video to be forever. Um, we started to do trig, so we're doing some trigonometry. This is why um, maybe you're not in trig. This is why we'll spend more time doing this, and I'm not worried about it not being completed 100% by Monday. I do want you to give it an effort before Monday, though. So we do have a uh, theta here, which is our angle. We have a 90-degree angle. We're talking about Pythagorean's theorem. You know, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So same as saying a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? The sum of all the interior angles here equal 8, 180 degrees. That's with a right triangle, 90-degree angle right there as well. So we have this thing called, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, what we always use Soka Toa. What's that mean? Well, it's basically when you're finding, when you know one of these things, or if you're looking for a theta, meaning the angle, do you know opposite and hypotenuse? Opposite and hypotenuse of what? Of that, of the angle's location. So for example, and this is algebra and trig, it's kind of like, Okay, do you understand what you were looking at here? If I know opposite and I know the sign, then I can figure out the hypotenuse, okay? And then in turn, I can figure out the adjacent side too. But it's using these kind of, these kind of things algebraically to, to solve if you don't know theta or if you don't know one of the sides. And these sides represent the forces, which you'll see in a second. Okay, so it's going over, it's just talking about trig functions. And we're going to say, okay, most of this case is we're looking at the hypotenuse now as our force. And then we have the force on the x-axis. We have what's, if this was the force, we have the force on the x component and the force on the y. So we have those two things. And that's what we're trying to solve in our Google assignment. Okay, the adjacent side in this situation and the opposite side in this situation is the F is X and F Y, so the force of, on the X axis and the force on the Y axis. So does this make sense when we're looking at this? If a force is pulling at a certain degree, 
then you would say, okay, percentage of that force is on the x-axis and a percentage of, the, of that force is on the y-axis. So those should add up to the entire force. Let's take a look. Sorry, I'm moving myself around so I don't get in the way of the slide. So right here, what we have is back the couple slides with this the Sokotoa. If we have the force at Y, that's the opposite side, right? Opposite, and we have the force itself, which is the hypotenuse. It's on the hypotenuse. And then we can say, okay, well, then what will that be? That means that the force of Y is going to equal the force times the sine of theta. So this is just algebra, right? I'm, if I say, hey... I want to get, I want to figure out the force of Y. I want, I know that, hey, I'm, I'm, this is the magnitude. We're pulling this thing at uh, whatever pounds force, whatever Newton's force. Um, even things like speed and things like that will eventually work here. But we're just looking at a force right here. We know this force is pulling at this direction and we know it's 15 pounds of force. Well, then we say, okay, we can say using algebra, we can say, well, let's get the, we want to know how much, if it's of the 15 pounds of force is actually pulling upwards, directly upwards on the, on the Y axis, we'll say. Well, you can just use this right here, the sign, and you can say, well, let's get the force Y by itself. We'll multiply each side with, by force. And so you're left with force Y equals the force times the sine of theta. And then the then you use cosine for the x on this side. So the same kind of thing for the x. If you didn't know what theta was, but you did know, hey, how much force is on the y-axis, how much force is on the x-axis, you can come up with theta using tangent. Okay? It'd be inverse tangent. All right, so here we go. Um, and I think I didn't click on anything new, but here's the here's an example. I didn't want to cover it like this, but I guess I will. So we have a magnitude of uh, 75 pounds. We have this direction of 35 degrees. This is exa the example of what you would submit for the assignment. You say, hey, the magnitude, uh, 75 pounds. That's the magnitude. The direction, it's 35 degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. This is the x-axis here. And it's 35 degrees up. Look, notice how we're here. And if we moved it 35 degrees counterclockwise, this would be there our, where our vector is. Okay, this is the direction. Sense, right, and up. Okay. What's that mean? That means they're both going to be positive, right? The X and the Y. Well, what about our what about using our uh, math now? How much of the 75 pounds is going to be on the um, F? Axis, the force on the x-axis, and the force on the y. Oh, let's take a look. <clears throat> well, defining x here first, so they use cosine because we know the hypotenuse and we know the adjacent because the adjacent is what we're looking for. The adjacent is the x. So we have 75, and we have theta. So what we end up doing is multiplying the cosine of 35 degrees by 75. Let me get my calculator so I can show you my what it looks like. I'm not sure if you can see this on the screen, but I'll pull it up anyway. So I take 35 degrees and I do the cosine. I'm using my trig and I go cosine of that. I'm left with 0.819. I'm going to multiply that by 75 here. So 61.4 pounds of this force is that percentage is on the x-axis that makes sense right if i were to do this thing um, at 45 degrees halfway between the y and the x-axis then you can bet that half of that force would be on the x-axis half of that force would be on the y-axis but we're not at 45 degrees we're going to favor the x-axis a little more that's why this is more than half of 75. so there it is right there 61 of the x now you could just say well if that's the case, then what's on the Y? Ah, but here's the trick. Here's the trickers, right? Because it's not exactly 
half. It's not, it doesn't turn out that way. If we look at this, it's not going to be, if I add 61 to 43, what am I, what am I left with? I'm left with 104. I'm not left with exactly that. So know that it's not going to add up. I think I said it added up to the total force. That's not the case, but it does favor one side or the other based on the theta. So for example, we can still run through the formula with sine for the y. So we're determining, hey, what's the force on the y here? Well, using sine now, we're looking for the opposite. So we know the hypotenuse and we know the theta, so we can find the opposite. Well, just like before, we're just using sine now. So with my calculator, and I can say, hey, um, sine of 35, so 35 sine, multiply that by 75, ba -da 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 -da. now 43. So 43 pounds of force on the y-axis. So if I were pushing at a 75 pounds force at a 35 degree right here, 43 on the y-axis, on the x-axis, 61. Or was, what was it? Was it 61? 61.4. So if I had a force um, meter, a force gauge sensor, and I was pushing at that angle, then you can see what would be on the Y and what would be on the X. And then it goes and does the same thing. Note that going downward, though, down and right, you're going to have a negative Y, positive X. Then it goes and does this one with uh, two ropes being pulled. Uh, that, and then it kind of works it out. Keeps going with different, different uh, vectors happening. So 400 pounds of force this way. This one, what's the resultant force, meaning the combination of these forces, and what's the resultant direction, I guess. So we actually determine that and all these things. It's pretty fun. Um, it's one of those things that's nerdy, but it's also really fun. Um, this assignment is due on Monday as well. So try to get it done on, before Monday. Again, it's this right here. You can see on the screen. Try to get it done before Monday. We will definitely go over that. And most likely that will end up being something that's due on uh, Wednesday next week. All right. Okay. Hopefully this makes uh, sense and uh, you do a good job. Bye.